In discussing Sherman Alexie's essay, Superman and Me, I'd like to start with a quote. So this is from the second paragraph of the essay. Uh, it's the last sentence of the second paragraph. My father decided... My father loved books. And since I loved my father with an aching devotion, I decided to love books as well. Now, if you hear Sherman Alexie speak, and if you look at some of his other writing, uh, you'll see that the idea of a father figure and the idea of a role model is very central uh, to understanding uh, where Sherman Alexie is coming from. And in part, that's because he's writing about some of the cycles that get passed down from generation to generation. Uh, not, not necessarily positive cycles. I'm talking about alcoholism, violence, abuse, um, despair. Right? Sherman Alexie's own father, in reality, um, did suffer from some of these issues, um, very serious social issues such as alcoholism, uh, such as no neglect for his children. Um, so we see in Sherman Alexie, um, this young boy, really, who's looking for a father figure, he's looking for a role model. Um, and I think there's a reason, uh, you know, that it centers around Superman. Um, you know, we have the image of a hero. Uh, Superman saves lives. And we see that repeated phrase, which I love, uh, which is that Sherman Alexie is trying to save his life. And later he says he is trying to save our lives, uh, referring to the Native American students uh, that he visits. And really this search for um, a solid role model, a positive role model, and a father figure is important um, in understanding his works and in understanding this essay, I believe. Um, you know, he describes this aching devotion that he has for his father. And one of the, I think, sad things about this essay is we never really see the father expressing an aching devotion back. Uh, we never see the father saying, hey, I love to read and you love to read Sherman. Let's sit down and read a book together. No, it's this uh, aching devotion, it's this image of his father that drives Sherman Alexi to read, uh, but I don't think he necessarily finds what he was originally looking for, which is his father's sort of acceptance, sadly. On the other hand, um, in his search for a role model, we find that he has actually become a hero, um, and that Sherman Alexi, through the process of becoming the celebrated writer that he is, um, has become a superman for others. Um, and I th think we can imagine the students in the classes that he's visiting having similar issues um, that are endemic to life on the reservation, which includes violence, which includes poverty, which includes alcoholism and drug abuse. And that those students likely are looking for a role model themselves. And that Sherman Alexi really has embodied this, this life. Um, I'm going to read another quote. Uh, this is from paragraph 5. This might be an interesting story all by itself. A little Indian boy teaches himself to read at an early age and advances quickly. He reads Grapes of Wrath in kindergarten when other children are struggling through Dick and Jane. If he'd been anything but an Indian boy living on the reservation, he might have been called a prodigy. But he is an Indian boy living on the reservation and is simply an oddity. Now, in addition to the nice slant rhyme there, uh, Sherman Alexie is a poet, so I do see a nice little use of rhyme with prodigy and oddity. Um, but I think he's also exploring this idea that on the reservation, the type of success that is expected within mainstream society is not really um, an accepted part of reservation life. Okay, And that's sort of... Um, reinforced in paragraph six, uh, where he says, a smart Indian is a dangerous person, widely feared and ridiculed by Indians and non-Indians alike. Right? And we really see this transformation of Sherman Alexie, where he becomes this role model, this writer, this figure. Uh, but it also means that he is, in the eyes of some, um, abandoning the reservation way of life um, and sort of leaving behind um, the fact that many Native Americans have rejected uh, mainstream U.S. society. Right? So Sherman Alexie's success as a writer does not represent success as a Native American, for some. Um, for some. That's a controversial thing I just said. But I do think that's a dichotomy uh, that shows up in this essay. Right? I'll go ahead and read another quote, also from paragraph 6. As Indian children, 
we were expected to fail in the non-Indian world. Those who failed were ceremonially accepted by other Indians and appropriately pitied by non-Indians. So again, I think this shows some type of rejection of the non-Indian world uh, by some of these Native American children. Now, in Sherman Alexie's life, um, he actually did sort of represent this transition uh, to success in the non-Native American world. Um, if you read his novel called The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian, which I recommend you do, of course, um, we see this is really based on his own life. Um, and it's about a, a young boy, Native American kid, um, and he's born with hydrocephalus, I believe that's how it's pronounced, uh, which means that he has too much cerebral fluid. It's, it's a condition of the brain. Um, and it can lead to um, brain damage and loss of memory, uh, death at a young age, all of these issues. Uh, so the character within the story um, suffers of hydrocephalus, but Sherman Alexi in reality did as well. Um, and in part, that led to... Um, his sort of longing for acceptance, I believe, uh, because he was um, unwell, unhealthy for a long part of his life. But it also led to him um, having this urge to explore this larger world outside of him. So he actually traveled over 30 miles every day, sometimes hitchhiking, sometimes walking, uh, to go to high school, uh, what at the time was an all-white high school uh, in Reardon, Washington. And this is um, in part of his, this is part of his formation as a writer and as somebody who has achieved success outside of the Native American world. Um, so he goes on to um, study at Gonzaga College, uh, University of Gonzaga, and, and later get his degree from Washington State University. And really, this sort of conflict between the Native American world and the non-Native American world has stayed with him all along. And I think he finds a very great compromise, which is that his books are widely read. Uh, he's this public figure and, and pretty well respected in the literary world. But he is constantly bringing to light the realities of living on the reservation. Um, so his success in the non-Native American world is part of promoting uh, more opportunity and growth, I believe, um, in the Native American world. And we see that uh, in the last paragraph, right? When he's going around, uh, now he's become an established writer. He's going to do classroom visits. Um, in the last paragraph of Superman and Me, um, he says, talking about the students, um, they look at me with bright eyes and arrogant wonder. They are trying to save their lives. And these are the students that, similar to Sherman and Alexi, are trying to effect some type of change. Then there are the sullen and already defeated Indian kids who sit in the back rows and ignore me with theatrical precision. The pages of their notebooks are empty. They carry neither pencil nor pen. They stare out the window. They refuse and resist. Right? And really we see that uh, Sherman Alexi, although he calls himself arrogant, uh, I don't believe is arrogant enough to say, I'm saving everyone's life one by one. Look at what a hero I am. Uh, he's very realistic about uh, what a struggle it is and the sort of conflict between those who, again, reject the world of literacy and education as being uh, something that is not for them, right? A uh, conflict between them and those who are attempting to um, find opportunity and, and success. Uh, so I'll just finish reading from the very last paragraph. Books, I say to them, books, I say, I throw my weight against their locked doors. The door holds. Uh, I think that's a great moment. Um, this sort of metaphor that the students have these doors that won't open, and he's trying to access them. Uh, but of course, it's reminiscent of the comic book in which uh, Superman uh, is kicking down the doors, and he has you know no problem getting through the doors because he's a hero. And I think this is Alexi being a bit more humble, saying, "I'm I'm I'm not a, at that hero status yet." All right. Uh, and I'll just continue reading. I am smart. I am arrogant. I am lucky. I am trying to save our lives. Um, great quote. I'll let you ponder what that means on your own. Thanks.